Hey y'all, welcome back to the Barbecue Booze and Life podcast. I'm your host, George, and if this is your first time joining us, and you're not really sure what this podcast is about, well, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about going on a global barbecue tour of the world, and right now we're still in America. Welcome to episode six, where we head to the Carolinas. And as I mentioned in previous episodes, I've heard some other folks on their podcast kind of establish their credibility. Well, I'm here to tell you the only credibility I have is that I was born in South Texas, baptized in the post oak smoke, and I love barbecue. Okay, I'm a regular dude who loves barbecue, his friends love barbecue, and we love eating barbecue. Uh, I've always been of the opinion that there's nothing like a fire and some good food to bring some folks together. So what I've set out to do is share my passion, hopefully inspire you to start cooking if you haven't cooked, help you cross that bridge in order for you to get to the other side. If you're intimidated by the cook, if you're already cooking, inspire you to travel and try different things and hopefully be inspired enough to go to these different places and give them a shot. Now, before we get started with the Carolinas and talking about hogs, I wanted to share with all you an article that a listener sent me from Texas Monthly. If you're not familiar with Texas Monthly and you couldn't put, it wasn't obvious enough, it's a magazine local to the state of Texas, well known for uh, a lot of the work they do in the barbecue space, and this article was written by one of their writers named Daniel Vong, who took a trip to the Carolinas. And the title of the article is, just published recently, Brisket is now getting top billing at some of North Carolina's best barbecue joints. Now, if you don't have, and I'm gonna share a link, there's gonna be a link in the bio for this episode. And if you don't have Texas Monthly, I recommend you clicking on the link taking a look, seeing if you can't take advantage. If you don't already have a subscription of a free read, it's actually very interesting that uh, Texas-style barbecue is being exported across the country, and people are enjoying it all over the place. So if you have some time, go ahead and click on the link in the bio and give it a read. Now, the Carolinas... Before we get started on the history and the local flair, etc., uh, is really well known for being the home of the whole hog cook. Now, there's different variations of the whole hog cook. You've probably had lechon, or you've probably had the hog cooked underground. You might have had it in a caja china, but the folks in Carolina have their own version of it. And it was the first hog that I, from in recent memory, ever tried. And I remember having to attend a mandatory fun event in North Carolina, not wanting to be at this event. And all of a sudden, I see this guy pull up in his trailer, and he's got a, uh, he pulls up in his truck, and he's hauling a black trailer, and it's a pit. And he opens the, fit, the pit, and that's the first time I laid my eyes on her. This is beautiful hog, nice golden brown color. Who knows how long he had been smoking it, but it was there. And that was going to be lunch. So with it, uh, we were served a mustard sauce that I think had some vinegar in it and some coleslaw. And it was phenomenal. Okay, I, I, it was, not only was it love at first sight, but I really enjoyed it. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. Now, a little bit about the history. So here's another first. Um, in, the, in episode five, we talked about there being an African culture influence. Now there's an indigenous influence on the cooking. Uh, before the Europeans colonized the area, native communities in the Carolinas were already practicing smoking and slow cooking the meats. And this had a lot of influence on early Southern barbecue techniques. Now, during the colonial area, the colonial era, excuse me, the European settlers brought their own grilling and smoking methods. And we've talked about, not that they were in this specific region, 
but we already see a lot of Czech and German influence in the way we cook. Now, so they bring their own grilling and smoking methods and they merge it with the indigenous techniques. And it just became a popular way of cooking uh, and it was also a good way for them to preserve the meat since there wasn't any modern day refrigeration back then. So at the turn of the 19th century, that's when the whole hog cooking really became a hallmark of the Carolina barbecue scene. Okay, And the method involved slow cooking an entire pig over a wood fire, which is a practice that still continues today, especially in Eastern Carolina. So you're asking me what Eastern Carolina is, and we're going to get to that. But it's a region of North Carolina. Uh, you're also starting to see a uh, sauce evolution, which we're going to talk about. And it, it had really huge cultural significance. You know, it was a part of the community. It, people got celebrations and communities would literally gather the around a hog roast. It was the centerpiece of the community. And then you start to see a lot of commer- commercialization and festivals around this as it gained a lot of popularity. Now, in North Carolina, there are two primary differences, okay? It's split into regions. So there's the Eastern and Western Carolinas, okay? And the differences lie in the primary type of meat they use, the cooking style, and the sauces. Okay, in Eastern Carolina, now we're in North Carolina. So in Eastern North Carolina, is more famous for the traditional whole hog barbecue. The entire pig is slow cooked over hardwood coals and the meat is often pulled or chopped before being served. Now, if you really, really are interested in watching this go on or, or, or seeing this showcased, I highly recommend you watch Netflix's BBQ Showdown, Season 1, Episode 8, where in 24 hours, not only do they have to smoke a whole hog, but they also have to smoke a brisket. Now, the unique thing about this episode is the, the contestant is also required to build a pit to facilitate the smoking of the hog. And the pits these folks build in 24 hours are phenomenal. They use center blocks and wire grates. I'm going to put a link in the, descri- in the episode description for this episode so you can give it a go. All right. So sauce, it's in the Eastern Carolina region. It's a more vinegar-based sauce. Okay. It, uh, it's vinegar and pepper-based. And so what happens is because of the vinegar, it's very thin, and it's a tangy sauce, which gives the meat a flavorful kick. And it's really become a defining element of the region's barbecue style. Again, its culinary heritage in the Eastern Carolinas is deeply rooted in agriculture and farming. And that's why there's an emphasis on using the whole hog in barbecue because it's really a reflection of the historical reliance on locally sourced ingredients in the area. Now, the whole hog is not unique to East Carolina. You see it all over the Carolinas, and we'll get to that later in the episode. But it's certainly something that puts it on the map. Now, for the Western Carolina barbecue style, so now we're on the Western side of North Carolina, they, there's a huge emphasis on pork shoulder and or bust and butt instead of the whole hog. All right, now their sauce over there is tomato based and it still has vinegar in it. And there is sometimes a hint of sweetness depending upon where you are in the region so it tends to be thicker than what you find on the east side. There might be some pit cooking or smoking. Now, moving on to South Carolina. So while well, we talked about North Carolina and its different regions, now we're going to South Carolina. And in my research, uh, the state really wasn't divided into regions, however, there were four regional styles for the state as a whole. Okay, so we weren't just talking about east and west, so it was, it was divided up into four. Now, 
a key element of South Carolina barbecue is their sauce, in which their sauce is mustard-based. So the mustard-based sauce, the South Carolina mustard sauce, is a defining feature of the state's barbecue culture. It's tangy, it's flavorful. The base is yellow mustard, vinegar, sugar, and spices. So it really imparts a unique taste on the meat, especially pork. Now for the four regional styles, the first one is low country style. And this is still a mustard based sauce, but has a sweeter profile to it. And you can really find it in the northeastern part of the state. Then you have the Columbia style or Midland style, and it's also mustard based, but it's a little bit spicier, a little bit more heat to it for a kick. And it's really popular in the central region of South Carolina. Then you have the coastal style, which obviously is found along the coast. And uh, even though it also uses mustard sauce, which tends to be milder, there's much more emphasis on seafood. Then there's the upstate style, which is the final style, and it's a northwest part of the state. And that sauce kind of leans towards a peppery vinegar and tomato based. So we're not, we kind of move away from mustard in that area, and we head over back to using tomato based sauce. So while pork is a staple in South Carolina barbecue, like pork or pork ribs, excuse me, like pulled pork or pork ribs, it's not uncommon to find other meats such as chicken and beef, which are often prepared with the signature mustard-based sauce. Now, uh, in my readings of North Carolina versus South Carolina, in North Carolina, the popular side to serve with the pork products was coleslaw. You could put it on the sandwiches, serve it on the side, mix it with the meat. But for South Carolina, it was mentioned that the barbecue is often served with classic Southern dishes, including coleslaw, hush puppies, collard greens, which I love collard greens, and cornbread. So similar to North Carolina, some areas of South Carolina maintain the tradition of cooking a whole hog over wood coals. And the mustard sauce is actually used during and after the cooking process. So moving on to the rubs, there's a lot of common elements in the, in the uh, Carolina barbecue rubs. I mean, I'm finding the same base in a lot of rubs uh, in, in the different states we've covered so far. For instance, there's a salt and pepper base like always. That's always the foundation. Okay, it always complements the natural flavors of the meat. Then there's paprika and cayenne, which the paprika is often used for color and mild, mild flavor, while cayenne and other chili powders really just contribute to the heat, which is a point I've made before. And really, the balance of the spices depends upon personal preference and what region of the state you're in. You're always going to find brown sugar or some sort of sweetener. And they both obviously add uh, a touch of sweetness as well as help the meat caramelize during the cooking process. Garlic and onion powder, which are very common ingredients and in rubs, really add to the depth and complement the overall flavor profile of the rubs. And then, again, depending upon where you go, there might be some uh, additional herbs and spices that get thrown in there like thyme, oregano, cumin might be included to add complexity to the flavor. But all just depends upon where you're going to be. While both states share a southern barbecue tradition, excuse me, tradition, the specific styles and flavor profiles of their barbecue vary, showcasing, showcasing the regional diversity within the Carolinas. Barbecue in the Carolinas is not just about food, but it's a social event. But that's true for everywhere you go, you know. Community gatherings, festival, family celebrations, there's almost always going to be someone behind the pit, people gathered around them, sharing stories, just having a good time. Uh, really, there's nothing more that I personally enjoy than the crackling of the coals, uh, some good company, and a good cold drink. Before we wrap up today's episode, I want to thank you for joining me on this barbecue tour. If you enjoyed the conversation and want more content, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. 
You can find it on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple. Your support means the world to me. So until next time, take care and